Good morning. Good morning. Oh man, we can get married now. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, isn't it good to be back inside? Yes. How about that? Some folks are still outside, so I'm going to say welcome or hello to everyone in the East Room and outside. And, and uh, of course, some folks will be watching later on on YouTube, but we're just glad to be together. Um, it, it is still exciting to get together, to encourage one another. Now, we know that the virus is still around. We're not saying, hey, it's over with, it's done. We know it's still around. We realize it can be dangerous to some folks, and, and so we respect that. But we just say, you know, use common sense, something the world has forgotten about lately. Uh, but just use common sense. If you're not feeling well, it's okay. Go ahead and stay home. You know, I know here back a few uh, months ago, I wasn't feeling well, and I thought, I'm not going to, whatever it is I got, I'm not going to bring it to people. So I had to call somebody and say, hey, will you preach for me today? I'm not feeling well. So, uh, and so we don't want to, you know, bring it in and give to whomever or whatever we have, but we're just glad to be here. Hey, I want to thank those who came out and helped in the building yesterday, man. Let's give a hand of appreciation. A lot of work was done. There's still a lot of work to be done. So, um, it's, you know, sometimes you have these little bugs. I don't know if Donna could actually hear the radio over there because, you know, Scott's like, go ahead. And then Donna and I'm like, go, go, go. And Donna's like, Scott, are you done yet? I'm like, go, go, go. So, you know, fixing up some, because they're live over there on the first welcome is what it's supposed to be. So just working all those things out. But it's so good, so good to be out being here. And, you know, this is especially for Clay Bennett. Springtime is just about a couple weeks away, buddy. So, you know, it's getting here. Yeah, it's, I figure some folks are like that. And so, you know, looking back, like I said, if somebody would have said, Dave, you're going to be worshiping outside for, you know, November, December, January, February, I'd be like, man, you're crazy. What are you talking about? And man, what it, God was so good through all of that. And it, it was a blast. And we'll probably do a couple of those this summer just to get outside and worship God out underneath his uh, big expanse there. I, I love doing that. Hey, I want to take a moment to pray. Um, got word uh, from Emery's um, sister-in-law that he is not doing well. He's actually, if I got it right, I think his heart's beginning to fail. And so uh, they basically, the hospital said there's nothing else they can do for him. Send him back to the home. And I'm hoping they'll let me come in and see him and visit him. So we do want to pray for Emery and the family. And also keep the Beach family, you know, praying for them with Jeff and what's going on there. For some of y'all don't know that, you know, him being pretty sick in the hospital. And so let's go to God in prayer. Father, you're an amazing God. And uh, even in this old world, and we don't understand, God, because you're God. And our, your ways are higher than our ways. And so, God, I, I'm just asking today that you'd be with Emory, that you would give his body strength, and you would give him comfort and peace in knowing that no matter what happens, he's your child. And uh, what a blessing Emory is to many of us. And so we're just praying that you'd be with him and be with the family. I uh, pray that you'd be with Jeff Beach and be with that family. God, give them strength uh, through this. God, there's many others who are hurting. It just seems like this past year has been one of those trials that's been set upon us. And we want to look at that today, God. So I humbly ask you to, uh, you speak and not me, God. That whatever is said today, even with our panel who will be coming up here, that there will be words of encouragement to us as a family. We love you, God. We thank you for loving us in all of our mess-ups, God. And help us to be real for one another. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. You know, I talked about we were cleaning up in here. We've actually had a big mirror over here. And that mirror it was here because when we do programs and plays, you get up and you want to look and make sure that, you know, your costume is all right and everything. And somebody might say, Dave, are you that vain? I'm like, no, that sucker keeps me humble. I look at that big mirror and I'm like, you got to lose some weight, buddy. You look bad. So it's, it's, it's humble, like, I'm going to tell you. But anyway, once again, thanks for those who's helping. And we'll do some more of that because we've got a lot of physical things around here to do. So I am so thankful. That this building is not a locked up building. I'll go to some church buildings and it'll smell musty. I'm like, mm, this church is not on fire for God because they're just not using this building to help one another. And I'm telling you, this building is so busy. You know, even during the, this is the place where they'll give out the, the COVID shots. And we get phone calls in the office all the time. Are you the ones giving the shots? Because one poor lady, I couldn't stop her before she told me her whole medical history before I got to tell her, you need to call the health department. Okay? All we're doing is letting you use the facility here. But 
Man, I'm just so thankful to see that the food pantries that happen here, because that's what we're supposed to be, helping one another. So we're in this new series entitled New Day, and I actually changed the sermon title. Uh, that's the series title, but I changed the sermon title after Tony had printed the papers. And so actually the, today's title is New Attitude. New Attitude. Now, it's great. we got some new folks here. we got new folks out in the parking lot. I'm not sure about the East Room, but I get to peek over there yet. But we just want to welcome you and hope that you feel welcome here, knowing that, uh, you know, we're all in this mess of life together. We're imperfect people, loving a perfect Savior and needing Him. So if you, uh, we're going to serve on today's New Attitude. If you got your Bibles, turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and keep that ready. But you know, today, things seem out of control sometimes. Uh, a lot, really, in today's world. And uh, it's kind of like that old farmer who was like, oh, actually, I wasn't a farmer, Scott Gold over there. Scott, my friend, who's over running sound on that side. And Scott was walking around out in the field one day, and all of a sudden he hears this tire squalling, and he looks up, and he sees this bus, and on the bus it has a big uh, placard that says, politicians from D.C. turn the countryside. Next thing you know, that old bus flips over and there's this terrible wreck. So Scott goes over to see what's going on to see if he can help and, and man, it just looks bad. So he starts burying the dead, digs one big hole and starts burying all of them. So a little bit later, the Hampshire County Sheriff's Department shows up looking for these politicians from DC, know they're touring the area. And uh, Scott tells him, he's like, hey look, he said, man, they had a crash. And he said, well, where are the politicians? And Scott said, well, it's like this. He said, I buried them. He said, you mean all of them were dead? He said, well, some of them said they weren't, but you know how politicians lie. <laughs> so that's for the professional politicians today, the DC politicians, and the ones who are alive. So anyway, uh, I couldn't resist that one. I just, when I saw it, I'm like, I gotta tell that one, man. But seriously, things seem to be totally out of control today. I mean, this past year has been, uh, it's been something else, something else for all of us. And I know that all of us have been affected emotionally one way or another. All of us, I don't care who you are, we have been affected. We're all in this together. It's not just, oh, I'm the righteous one. Look at me, nothing's affected me. No, no, honestly, truly, really, we have been affected in one way or another with this virus, how it's been handled, with all the other people in the, in the world, uh, in our country. It's just been driving us crazy. So here we are, Colossians chapter 1. This series is out of Colossians, and I, I, God does this stuff. I didn't know that our Bible Bowl team was actually studying the book of Colossians for their tournaments. And that, this, this has happened a couple of different times. But anyway, we're going through the book of Colossians. And I've often said that when I speak, a lot of times you can pick apart a book and you can give a, a lot of information that really doesn't help you in your everyday Christian life. You know, and so I try to look and say, well, what can we glean here that is actually helpful to us so that every day we live, we can grow closer to Jesus. And so here we are, Colossians 1, kind of a long read. I'm reading from the New International Version, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace. To you from our God, our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. And of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven. And about which you are, uh, have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You uh, learned from uh, Epaphras and our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We have continually asked God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to the glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. 
For he has rescued us from the domain of darkness and has brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Now I want to look at something that I think Paul is emphasizing right here in the first part of this letter. And that is this. Paul refers to these people as brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. And he mentions a few times about the love they have toward one another. And so, you know, I mean, you look at this as sort of that's family. And, and so, so say family this morning. Family. Okay, we'll do brother practice. Here we go. Say family. Family. There you go. You're getting right back into it, man. All right, family. And you know, family cares for one another. Those of you all have a healthy family. I said I was blessed. You know, my mom and dad know the Lord and growing up that way and, and having three ugly, I mean, three sisters. And uh, yes, I still got a pick on my crown of hand. But anyway, and, and my one brother. But uh, it, it, it's a blessing. And you care, families care for one another. If you can picture, maybe you didn't have that healthy family. And, and, and I'm sorry. I mean, sometimes it happens in life. People aren't following God. The family's become a mess. And, and, and so, I, you know, I apologize for that. Sometimes it makes it hard to understand what we're supposed to be in the Christian family because of that. But you know what? In the family, we know one another. We know one another. Say, know one another. Know one another. So, thinking about family, growing up, you know, if you knew my family, and of course some of you do, back when we were singing together and everything, if you ever met my brother Mark, you would say, well, he's just quiet and never, you know, hugs anybody, never, you know, he's just very quiet. I'm like, oh, you don't know my brother Mark. You know, because Mark, he might be, you know, uh, quiet out in, in public. You know, even when he's playing keyboards, and that rascal can downright play a keyboard. Man, he just blows my mind. And the older he gets, the better he gets. I mean, I mean, he just good. And, uh, but he's, you know, people come up to him and say, hey, I really enjoy your keyboard playing. He's like, oh, thank you. That's about all you get out of it. But when you get on the, when you get on the bus, yeah, the jokes, everything else, mostly politically incorrect. But anyway, uh, you know, he's always those sly little things. And I used to, when we were in high school, because Mark, he would do some of the craziest things at home. And I would tell my coach about it. Like, oh, no, no, not Mark. Mark wouldn't be like, I know Mark, trust me. That, that is Mark. I, I, I know him. And, and so, you know, there's a whole, I've got a whole litany of stories. So on his 40th birthday party back a few years ago, uh, Rhonda, his wife, asked me to speak, and I did, and shared a lot of stories about Mark. And so someone asked Rhonda later, well, what did Mark think of the birthday party? He said the only thing he said was, who asked Dave to speak? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. But his family, we begin to know one another. And you know what? None of us are perfect. Let's get over it, okay? You know, we want to put on this, I am a Christian, and walk around with our heads stuck high. We're all a mess. The difference between us and, and most of the world is that we know a Savior who loves us and, and aids us and helps us. So we're on the same page. Yeah, we can give a hand clap. Say that we need to realize that as a church. We need to be real. Real. We're all a mess. And so we love and support one another. Love and support. Say love and support. Love and support. That's what we're supposed to do. And you're like, well, this person here drives me crazy. I know, I know. I drive a lot of people crazy. But anyway, we still love and support. You might not always be the best of buddies because of your different interests, but we still love and support. And this is what we want to do today. We're doing something a little different, and we're going to have a panel come out here in just a minute. Because I said we have all been affected emotionally this past year. And uh, we need to support one another. As I began to start thinking about this series here a couple of weeks ago, and I remember when I landed in bed, I'm like, God, how do you, what is it that people need right now? What do you want me to speak? Because I always want to be real. God, I want to be from you. I want you to speak. And, you know, because I'm nobody without you. And, and so um, as I looked about this, I thought, yeah, nobody, you know, we've all been affected by this. And, and, and so, uh, you know, some of us, you know, we've, we've got these emotions going on. And some of y'all were good enough to turn in some papers. And you wrote down the emotions either you, your children, your family have been experiencing and so I'm going to read from Galatians 6. I read this last week, but I'm going to read it today. So it'll sink in. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they're something, when they're not, they deceive themselves. And certainly, we don't want to do that. So I'm going to ask our panel to come on out. And I'm going to move these chairs. Anxiety. Anybody want to start speaking about anxiety? Anybody here? 
fight at the first moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all know that everyone, I think, in this room has had periods where we've been anxious. And, and you know how that feels, uh, that feeling inside, that gnawing, uh, not being able to relax. And it is very uncomfortable. Um, I think a lot of physical things happen when we're anxious. We don't sleep well. Uh, some people eat way too much. Other people can't get anything in their mouths. It's not uncommon to be dehydrated. And so a lot of physical things go on with anxiety. Um, so that a little bit people talk, but, but that's important to know that there are physical things that are happening inside your body when you're anxious. Well, I think that's true. I mean, I think I'm, like you said, once you said some people don't put things in their mouth or they, they put too much in it, I'm a eater. <laughs> See it, I wear it. I mean, that's a, so you're right. Maybe I'm a little more anxious than what I thought I was. Well, I don't feel so angry. Maybe I am. <laughs> but, you know, through all this, not just the virus, uh, but through what's been going on in our country. Oh, yeah. It, that gets anxiety, you know, and, and I really had to purposefully work on that. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But, but yeah, I mean, that anxiety of, you know, God, what in the world is going on in this country? Why are you letting this happen in this country? And, of course, one of the things God let in my heart is they have worshiped this country a little bit too much. And that's true. I mean, no, 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 no government will stand forever. And I hate to say that. I'm not trying to depress you today. Uh, but the kingdom of God will. And uh, I'm going to be a part of that. Okay, anybody else have anxiety? Okay, here's a good one. Anger. Anybody want to start with anger? I think I can start with that one. <laughs> I think I actually... Was up and gave a message outside us about this. This is one that I, I, I think that I feel, and it really was as I talked. It was a wake up, wake up call to me. It's really angry, and just the whole mask and the overreaction that I felt that taking place. And I could be wrong. I'm not saying I'm right or wrong, but it just. And then the whole political scene that you're talking about, and the, how I see our country going. You might not agree with me. That's okay, but it just really angry to see how this world's going and it really hit me where I was putting a lot of trust in or where I was making my home really was making my home here and I, I was wrong for it but anger yeah I, I, that, that's one of my first emotions like that gone people like I can't do my drug yes anger is probably one of my main emotions that I was really feeling that I was seeing more I can relate to that Jake because, um, you know, I, I look at, I don't know what it was, but something last spring was causing all this baby boom happening in, in, in January, February. I have former students and people in my life that have been having babies, and their spouses couldn't go to any doctor appointment with them. You could have one person when you're in there giving birth, but then you can take these exact same people plus 10 others to Walmart with you. And I'm like, this just doesn't make sense. And I became bitter and angry about the whole thing as well. Um, when the government was saying at the first, oh, you can't leave your house, you can't do that. You know, the Bible tells us to test the spirit. So I thought, wait a minute, I thought fresh air was good for us. Um, and seeing the depression and, and what people have been going through, the people in the nursing homes dying without their family members. I mean, I've been very blessed. My kids and I, uh, I teach at Calvary Christian Academy in Presbyterian. My kids attend there, and we've had church or school we've had church too. Um, but we've had school the entire time, and there are safety procedures that can take place. And then when you see these people who are dying alone and thinking that their family doesn't care for them, I did. I became very bitter and angry. It was, it was an emotion I didn't like dealing with. All right, loneliness. You know, Robin, I go to the same thing, think of these folks, especially in nursing homes. I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, I know we would go like sing in nursing homes or, you know, the church would go. And honestly, I confess that, you know, I didn't like, oh boy, I'm getting to go sing in a nursing home. But every time after I left there, I'm like, God, I was blessed because I saw those older folks who just appreciate it. And now I think of my friend Emily, you know, I'm hoping certainly going to let me in to see him. 
Uh, but yeah, that, you know, loneliness. And some folks, so, I'm not going to bring up another motion, but because of this other motion, they are lonely. They, they feel like they have nobody in their life, no one. They haven't been able to see folks, young people, kids, with school. They're like, man, this is driving me nuts. I can't see my friends. I, I just feel so lonely. So, yeah, I mean, it, it probably hasn't affected me, loneliness, as much because I'm still around a lot of people. I mean, we never stopped having church. We did it outside, and I was always around people. But, oh, my goodness, so many. You're going to say something. No, I, I didn't want to interrupt. I just um, was, was going to talk about um, how one emotion can lead into oh, yeah. other emotions. You know, the loneliness that, that we feel at times, not being able to see people that we care about, uh, not being able to be with them in the hospital. I, I haven't had to experience that, but I would be, I would be really over the top if, if my mom was in the hospital and I couldn't be with her. Um, so I think it can lead to other emotions of anger and anxiety and despair and, um, that one can kind of feed into the other very quickly. Um, fear. Fear. You know, you know that. I, I feel like that was, I don't want to say the objective of a lot of things, but by golly, I, mean, I don't know about you guys, I, I just have trouble watching pretty much any news outlet anymore just because you know, I understand it gets ratings to, to put up sensational stuff, but it's just, it seems like everything that comes out is just fearful, 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 fearful. It, uh, that's, I don't mean, know, discouraging is not on there, but that's the discouraging part. That, that's part of, let's see, we get to go back with the anger. I guess anxiety, too, Judy, like you were saying. Probably that just didn't realize that. Let's see, we become fearful. Someone that has a mask or doesn't have a mask. I think that's why I'm at the beginning of Delphi with this well, because we do split our time between two states. And thinking, oh wow, while I'm in West Virginia, are they going to come up with a mandate saying we're, we're going to close off the borders and you can't get to the other state? And then that fear. And that's when God really laid into me some of these songs, like Fear is a Liar. And He started sending these, it, it just it was really cool, like with Caleb and some other radio uh, broadcasting stations. I felt like God was helping me with that with some of these songs, dealing with, you know what? 365 times, I tell you not to fear. Therefore, I mean it. And that has helped me through. Now, that doesn't mean that I haven't had my fearful moments because you know, I still have flesh. But it, it has been a feeling that I don't like <laughs> at all. Yeah, I think fear. I didn't say what I mean. This goes to the virus. When it first comes out, it's like, okay, what is this? Let's be very cautious. And, you know, I've always been one that says, use common sense. Stand back and look at something. If something's not making sense, you know, watch out because fear is a great motivator. If you can make people fear, and I've said that so many people are afraid of dying and we're killing one another. And I think that's the truth, slowly. But I mean, that's fear. And, and so you really need to look at yourself because fear cripples. It'll cripple you. Uh, there are people who will not let family members see one another. And it's fear. They won't do something. Fear. You know, and I know it's real. I know that. I, I, trust me, I know it's real. But I'm thinking, am I going to let it control me? Am I going to let it control me? So those of you out there with fear, you know, and I try like my grandchildren, you know, you know, man, because I mean, you can ruin some kids' lives and make them fearful all their life because you just went overboard with something to the point that they'll grow up living in fear. They've been taught that. And, and so, you know, I mean, my grandkids, I'm always, you know, God's going to be with us. It's going to be, you know, and so not that something can happen. It can. You realize that. That's a reality. But, you know, even look at the chances of what's going on. So fear is real. If you're out there having fear, yeah, I mean, we'll give a few tools here in a little bit. But you're not alone. You're not alone. Here's a biggie. Depression. Depression. I think all we have to do is look at the suicide rates and see that there are a lot of folks dealing with it. I mean, I know two people back in the fall, a, a teenager and then an elderly person who just got into a deep depression and went that step into suicide. Um, and 
that's a big topic that the mainstream media doesn't want to approach. Yeah. I agree, and I think particularly for healthcare workers, um, what they've had to deal with, uh, the long hours, um, watching people die, feeling helpless, when your whole motivation, your whole career has been to save, um, that they've really, it's, it's had a very negative impact. And, and the coping mechanisms haven't been, or haven't been utilized in a way that has had a good outcome. Yeah, actually some of the coping mechanisms have been taken away. It's a truth, you know, I mean, but I mean, depression, some people think well, Christians should never go through depression. And um, once again, you know, well, neither should we be tempted to sin, I guess, I don't know. And I, I know I, I used to hate mentioning that, yeah, I went through depression back a few years ago. And then God was saying, let people know that. And let me tell you, in my weakness, he's made strong. You know how many people have come into my office and just said, hey, I think I'm depressed. I'm going through depression. Because sometimes we put on this false air that we're perfect. And that's what we're here about today is saying, look, we all deal with these. And so, you know, if, if you're dealing with that, I know the handout piece of paper, there's a little note down at the bottom. And it says, you know, these are just helps. But if, if you, you know, are having some issues and, and some of your friends are saying there's some change in you, then don't ever be ashamed to seek professional help for that. I mean, that's not a sin at all. I mean, not at all. And, and uh, so... Yeah, it's definitely, with everything that's going on, I mean, depression. Yeah, even in our children to watch uh, some different, and like I said, trying to normalize as much as we can in their lives. But, uh, frustration. Frustration. I'm frustrated with <laughs> I feel like that's, uh, maybe that's before you're angry, you're frustrated. Yeah. So maybe that is part of become anxious, frustrated, and angry. And Judy says, you're right. I mean, a lot of these things, it's just not one or the other. I mean, they're depression. I just uh, hearing that one, I'm like, wow, that's a combination of a lot of different things that end up to that. And so frustration, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I think I felt frustrated. If I had to put a label for me, it's, it's been frustration. Um, a new way to all the things in my life that weren't there anymore, things that I used to look forward to, they're canceled. You can't go, you can't do. Um, and so I, I felt the frustration a lot with this. I, I really was so naive. I thought back last March, oh, this will be over in a couple of weeks, and the flu is going to run its course. And, and here we are a year later, and we're still dealing with it. So I, I really was not prepared. I think, yeah, to touch with what Judy said, the frustration of when is this going to end? Because at first they said, oh, as soon as we get a vaccine, oh, we have a vaccine. Well, now you have to wear a mask, maybe two masks, a couple double box. Um, <laughs> and, and then saying, well, it could be 2022. Um, it, that's frustrating in itself because you're thinking, is there going to be an end? And, Ultimately, we just have to remind ourselves God is in control. It doesn't matter who's at the White House, who's you know, in control here, or at least they think they are. God is. And we just need to you know, wrap our arms around His promises in the Word. Yeah, I think, like I said, frustration. And for me personally, I like my freedom. And when you start telling me what I got to do, I mean, that's frustrating to me. I'm like, if I kill myself, I kill myself by mistake, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's you know, that frustration that, that, you know, the almighty government knows what's best for us. You're not smart enough to take care of yourself. And that, oh, frustrating. But then I got to ask for the parents who had children in school. Uh, I was asked, and you can say yes, Bill, loud when I say it. Any of you parents been frustrated with schoolwork? Yes. Yes. I see hands going up in the air, too. Hands going up in the air. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine, I know my daughter, I mean, when she would come over to the house and, and she was going to school work with the kids, but then it's hard. They're not trained teachers. And you got a little one there going like, mommy, 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 you know, or stealing the pens and pencils from the kids who are working. And so, yeah, frustration. You're not alone, man. I mean, frustration. It's frustrating. Uh, bring this together. All right. Um, patience, or lack thereof. Um, anybody want to speak on that one?
I don't want to do all the talking, but I'll tell you this. Don't ask God for patience, because you know how you get patience? Through trials and trips. Yes. So you ask God for patience, watch out. Just practice it, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I'm, you know, I go back to, I would always watch, you know, the briefings from the White House, because believe it or not, when I watch the news, I'm like, I watched that, and I knew what they said. That's like, you know, so I watched that. And I remember, you know, so many days to slow the spread. So many, and they come back, so many days to slow, you know. And, and so, you know, being patient. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at home, when I'm really real, you know, my family will tell you, when I walk in that door and I heard some other new mandate, I heard this, I heard that. Oh, yeah. You know, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. And uh, being in patience. Being in patience. Uh, confusion. How about that one? I think that goes with what we've been saying is just the confusion and what is next um, with the government saying, oh, you know, this and that, and who to believe and who not to believe, and, you know, should we just follow Dr. Pepper because Dr. Pepper seems to have it more together than any of these others. I like that. Uh, or Dr. Seuss. I don't want to bring it up. <laughs> uh, just... Yeah, it is confusing. Like, who in the world is this? This one says this, and both of them are experts in their field, you know, but yet they're telling you something totally different. So, um, yeah, there is confusion out there everywhere. Now, somebody did not put this one down. So, oh, yeah, that's true. It kind of adds into the others, but I heard this a couple times. Boredom. Boredom. I would say I would speak up properly for the kids. Probably yeah. feel this more than anything. Yes. Is the boarding you know, they're used to, and especially the high schoolers. I would, I would guess, you know, the ones that are probably ready to graduate. There's a lot of things that go on that you look forward to. Maybe even do middle school looking up toward high school, and then it kind of was just taken away. I know Jeremy, you know, we talk about that too with them, and you know, maybe that's frustration as well. But probably a lot of boarding of just sitting and waiting for. Things to pass them, like to get back to normal. I mean, we're relational people. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's we're built relationally. Yeah. Even though I like my time alone, I really am a relational person. I was just, I was created that way, just as you are. We become bored when we don't have things. I know my grandkids were bored when my grandson said, Yeah, I want to go to school. I like, You are bored. <laughs> <laughs> they were ready. Yeah, because everything was taken away. So, I mean, yeah. So, you think. Children, teenagers, you know, yeah, watch for them because, like I said, when these things happen, it, it does, and sometimes they hold it in. They don't know how. They don't know what's going on with them. They don't know how to express it, and so you really need to watch, you know, for your children and your, you know, and, and others because it, it is affecting them. And so we need to be there for each other. And um, you know, if their behaviors change. You're like, why? What's, <laughs> you know, look what's going on. And uh, it happens to all of us in some way or, or another. Um, and then the feeling of loss of control, or the last one. Feeling of loss of control. Well, I think that a lot, I was surprised actually when um, this kind of started. And I heard when I knew somewhere that one of the one of the stores that was open that didn't have to close were liquor stores. And I was like, no, how did they come up with that? What I think a lot of people turned to a substance to try to help themselves deal with um, confusion and fear and anger and, and all of those emotions. And, and our government said, well, liquor stores can stay open. That'll help get through this. And, but I think that is a loss of control. And I think alcoholism and substance abuse issues are climbing again. And so that does speak to, I think, a loss of control. And I think it's us as Christians, not judging people, but trying to help them. I mean, that's a, that's a weakness they have. I'm not saying it's a weakness, it's all right. I remember going to a funeral one time for a family who didn't know God, and I got called and said, can you do? And, you know, I saw those people going out, their friends, going out to the truck, and they were getting their courage. That's all they knew. 
You know, I wasn't sitting there to beat them down. You know, I didn't tell them God loves them. But I knew that's why they were going out there. That was, they needed courage. They needed, you know, the dad smelled the liquor when I hugged him. And, and I didn't sit there on judging, you know, I let know I loved him. And if he ever needed somebody to talk to him. But yeah, that was awesome. It's self medication Yeah. It's a, it's a form of self-medication. Yeah, I mean, some of these guys who are in addiction programs even couldn't even meet. I mean, I remember they had some out in their parking lot because they said, we, you know, we need to meet. Yeah, folks who are going through this, yeah, they need that to be able to meet together and strengthen one another. Oh, my goodness. That was so. And my loss of control, once again, was here comes the government again. <laughs> you know, control my life. And, and I'm not anti. I, you do need government. God says, we'll talk about that next week and how much, how do we. Because some people go like, well, what do you do about Romans chapter 13? So we'll talk about that next week, uh, how God used that. But you need government. You need rules. God did say, you know, people need to be governed. Uh, I mean, this is when they overstep that bounds. It, it's even in anything. I think a pendulum swings too many times this way, and they're like, oh, my goodness, it swings that way instead of we where it should be. It's amazing. Um, so now, just from us, we're not experts. Probably maybe Judy's the most expert in this up here on the stage in her field, but she'll tell you I'm not an expert or not. Um, but some of these things, what's some things you have found that help you or you've seen help others when they're going through these emotional times? So it's... I think most people don't need professional counseling, but I think they need a support system. And that can come in lots of ways. You, you know, Dave, you've talked about your family. That's a support system for you. And many of us have that, but some people don't. And so you might have to create a different kind of support system. While I'm blessed with a loving family, um, I also have um, a, a group of women that I uh, do Bible study with. And that's a tremendous uh, support system for me. Um, I can talk with those women openly. They don't judge, they don't try to fix, they just listen. And when they say, Judy, I am praying for you, I know there's a group of women that lift me up to God every day. And that's very powerful and gets me through many valleys that I, that I walk through. Um, so you can create a support system for yourself with your next door neighbor, having a cup of coffee, joining a Bible study group, um, having someone that you can talk with and, and not have to pretend. Sometimes you have to pretend with your family. Um, I tell my mom I'm okay, whether I'm okay or not, because I don't want to put anything else on her. Um, so, but there are people I can say I'm not okay to. Uh, and that, it, it's just sharing and knowing that people are listening and caring. Um, it's just so powerful. Um, I, I talked with a young man who um, had attempted suicide, and um, he literally jumped off uh, the Golden Gate Bridge and was not supposed to survive, but he did. And he said to me, right after his feet left the bridge, he changed his mind. Um, but that the whole way to the Golden Gate Bridge, if anyone had said to him, are you okay? Can I help you in some way? He felt strongly he would not have jumped that day. It, it's just stuck with me all these years that sometimes just asking someone if you're okay or can I help is exactly what they need. Um, so we as a group, I think it become very powerful in coming alongside of and helping one another. Yeah, of course I kind of smile when you say that group of ladies, and they don't try to fix it. Men, we're fixers. <laughs> so, you I know, smile we're fixing it. And I, uh, I smile on that too. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what Tammy says, I'm like, why well, you gave me a problem, I gotta fix it. Um, and, and so, like Judy said, you know, groups, I think life groups, a lot of times when our life group meetings, when we first start out, it's venting. You know, just letting people, it, it gives them that venting. And understanding, it's okay. I don't care if you are a follower of Jesus Christ and you mis mentioned you're having an issue with something, don't we all? And, um, you know, when we can confess that, 
to one another and not judge one another. Uh, man, what a healing that is. And so I'm going to plug in for the men's weekend coming up. I'm looking forward to the 19th and 20th. That, that's been good for a group of men to get together. And we're men, so when we start out, we're going to do some kind of man thing in here. Because you've got to do something manly. Women will come into a meeting and they'll cry and hug one another and see what's going on. Men were like, until we shoot something or blow something up, then we'll talk. Um, and so, you know, I think that's going to be a good, that men's group, it's, it's a good thing for us to, you know, and like I said, being real and true and don't judge one another, don't go spreading it out to anybody, you know, just be there. But another thing for that, we talked on the phone when I called Judy, he said, I've got this idea, what do you think? And, you know, we are talking about this, and she said, even, I think like your place you go or a routine you do to help, you know, I have my ravine on my property when I really want to spend some time with God and go down there where it's real quiet and only hear the creek and, and say, God, first of all, what about me? You know, the Bible says, you know, when David prayed, and one part I never caught, you know, he was, he was talking about seeing the being wicked away to me, but he said, no, my anxious thoughts. I thought, wow, it's one of the things I've missed for years. God, why am I anxious? You know, and, and so that, so maybe it's music, you know, maybe it's riding a bike. Uh, these things should help uh, whatever it is, you know, exercise because it, it creates these endorphins. And, and I, the one I like, I put on that paper is laughing. I, of course, I love to laugh. You know, if you know, know me, you know, I love to laugh. And I think it is healthy. Help, laughing is very healthy. So, any other things that you all? Laughing actually is physically very healthy. healthy. I forget what it is to combine the reason. <laughs> I think it is, yeah. When you laugh, um, so it makes you feel better, especially with belly laughs. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, just turn off the TV. Yes. Or turn off the TV. Go for a walk. Um, there, when the parks are closed, and you can know, go up here, Central Hampshire Park, and you know, find other places. And that's one thing my kids and I do. We, we would go outside and just look around, do a little scavenger hunt, um, jam out to some music. I'm gonna tell you, you're not gonna embarrass yourself in front of your kids. Um, but it's not like you're going to do some kind of crazy thing that's going to be on social media later unless they're secretly recording you. Um, but big time, turn off the TV. We, we just did away with all of that for a long time and I started finding other sources of news like other news, news and some of these that are, will give you a little bit different side of the story. Um, find a hobby. I, I know one thing I had said for years, I wanted to get my daughter's scrapbook done up before she graduates high school. She graduates next year, and I was able to get her birthday scrapbook finished. Um, I must say it's a different story, but he has a lot before he graduates. <laughs> but, you know, those little things, they, they really do matter. And going on with Judy, I do have a couple of co-workers that we do, we meet off of each other, and. If, if we do try to say, oh, well, how about this? We're like, you know what, just stop. I just want you to listen to me. I don't want any words, just listen to me. And that's one thing we've had to do with each other, just, just listen. Um, do you have anything you want? I, I think, I'll say it again for me, I mean, it's been sort of a blessing for me to look at, it's a mirror to me in the same where I put my hope into. It's a blessing that it showed me where we have a hope, like Robin was saying, like this, this isn't it for us. We, we can have a hope, we, this isn't home. Um, that's just kind of what it taught me. I think we're doing it. And I think really too, having a sincere prayer life, and I'm not talking about repeating the, but I'm saying, just start, if you're like, I don't know how to pray, you just talk to God. So I think that's it. That is another, hopefully, you know, realizing who you is reading scriptures. Now, sometimes you're like, where are you, God? But still, find the translation that's good, you know, easy for you to understand. You've got a smartphone, hit that baby. I, and I'm doing a sermon. Sometimes I'm in a vehicle, whatever scripture I'm going to be using, I'm letting that thing play in my head over and over again to see what I'm missing. And uh, and then when you mentioned music, I mean, take the 30-day Caleb challenge if you want to, because it, it's words, those spiritual words bring healing. I mean, songs will come to you. I've, I've been singing a song that I love to sing in my head, and then I catch myself like, Avery, you listen to what you're singing because you really need that today. That's happened to me many times. It's like, that's how God speaks to me with these songs. Can you tell me 
you were talking about the scriptures, I want to plug, put a plug in for the U version because they yes. have a plethora of devotions, and there have been a lot of people put on their devotions dealing with all these issues we've talked about, but also in particular the coronavirus. And you know, where is God in all of this? Yeah. He, he's there. Oh, yeah. he, he, he wants us to draw to him, not yeah. to what we've been drawn to. Exactly. All right, let's give a hand for our, our panel. I appreciate them so much. Thank you all. just want to say a few words closing out this morning. And uh, like I said, some of y'all got that handout. Hopefully if you did, you can pick one up. And it talks about our emotions uh, and the scriptures to help dealing with them. Uh, but I want to do something right now. I think we have a serenity prayer. And, and I know when we had CR that started here, that's how first the heaven uh, yeah, part of home started. Yeah, they would do this serenity prayer, and I, to me, I thought, what good does that do? And I remember talking to a person who was who was working through addiction, and they said sometimes I would say this serenity prayer. So do we have that up there, Don? On the, yeah, okay, there we go. So let's say this together: serenity prayer. You ready? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time. Enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as a pathway to power, taking, as he did, the sinful world as it is, not as that I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will that I may be uh, reasonably, reasonably, yeah, reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the rest. Amen. So that's, you've got a card probably too that has that, and that's, that's a lot of wisdom in that. It helps us when we're going through things. Um, someone once said, your, uh, it was a Heather Far, uh, Farrington said this, she wrote this, your emotions are your soul's response to life. Your emotions are your soul's response to life. And, uh, you know, I've given thought to that. And, and I don't want to sound harsh today, because all of us deal with them, okay? But honestly, that, that is so true. You know, I confess this too. Really, our emotions tell us where our trust is. You know what I'm saying? It really, yeah, it really, really does. And, and so we really need to work on putting more trust in our God. John Bloom wrote, our emotions are a great gauge, not a God. Our emotions are a great gauge, not a God. And so we need to remember that. You know, we are not... To allow our emotions to control us. But we need to work on, there is a gauge of what's going on in our life. You go to God and say, God, why? Why, why am I feeling this way? What's going on? You know, and I, and I, I really have to do that. I mean, I get up out of bed in the mornings and, uh, you know, I get up and I, I, it, was, it was a little bit of anxiety and depression. And I feel it. And I start, God, I want to thank you for this warm bed I just got out of. God, I thank you for the shower I have. God, I thank you for this body wash because it smells good. God, I thank you. I just started thanking him. And I didn't feel like it. Okay, you got the picture? I made myself because I could see what was going on in my life. And I could see what Satan was trying to do. Colossians 1, 13 to 14. For he has, uh, he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into his kingdom of the son he loves. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. All of us are struggling. I, I like that scripture I put down here on this paper. And it says this in 2 Corinthians 2.11. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Speaking of Satan. Satan will use our emotions against us. And sometimes there is there's a healing process. You're like, you know what, today I'm just going to get better. It takes, it takes time. Okay? I mean, I'm going through depression. And I used to ask Tammy, am I ever going to get better? I didn't want to feel the way I felt. I didn't want to feel that way at all. Why do I feel this way? And I remember going through it. You know, am I ever going kind to of get better? And even with our emotions, you know, we all struggle. So let's be real. Let's don't put on the, the happy Christian mask. I'm going to wear a mask, man. And, and I know because sometimes when I'm up front speaking, you know, you don't want to hear like, oh, no, no, Dave's life today. I mean, these chairs be empty because y'all don't want to. Y'all got enough going on. But trying to say, we do have a God who loves and cares. And he's there for us. So what can we do here? We can bear one another's burdens. We'll say it again. We can bear one another's burdens. What can we do? Bear one another's burdens. Some of y'all got it. Let's say it again. Bear one another's burdens. 
A few more guys. Let me hear. Here we go. Mayor. Bear one another's All right. That's what we're supposed to do. Bear one another's birds. I remember a young man whose son had just passed away, a young child. And he was walking by my vehicle that one day, and I looked out and said, hey, how you doing? He said, I'm doing terrible. But you know what I thought? He was being real. He went, oh, I'm fine. No. And I let him know, please, man, if you want to talk, just give me a call. But sometimes when we're going through a lot of junk, we do need to be real and understanding. We don't need to judge. We need to be there forever. Because we have a hope in Jesus Christ. And that hope isn't a wish. It isn't a assurance. This life is short. You know, and, and we need to put our trust in Jesus. Our praise team is going to make their way out here. And, and as we're singing a song, we're going to have prayer partners in the corners here and over in the East Room. And if you need prayer for something, don't be ashamed to ask, hey, can you pray for me for something? Or, or if you are today saying, I'm, I am ready to put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I am ready to be obedient in baptism. The baptistry is ready. It's warm over there. I stuck my hand in there yesterday just to make sure. And remember you're saying, I just want to come here and say I want to be part of this family. I want to be part of the family. Uh, we hate to use the word membership because membership has its privileges. And, you know, so we don't like to use that word because, no, we're family, so we got responsibilities for one another. We, have, we do have privileges and, and blessings, but we also have responsibilities. And maybe you're willing to say, I want to be part of this family. We're going to sing this song. Man, this song is powerful. Let's be standing. I'm going to pray, and we're going to sing this song. If you have a need, won't you come? Father, I have this hope. Depth of my soul 